the biggest brand games this weekend. What games are going to get the highest TV ratings? And it's kind of a hodgepodge because the schedule, as you saw on Tuesday's show with the viewing guide, is all over the place. You've got a ton of big games in the night slot. You've got a ton of big games in the afternoon. Uh, I'm going to tell you what I think uh, are going to get the highest ratings. Number one, I think Texas A&M and Alabama ends up getting the highest rating. CBS in a night slot is going to, I mean, there's more people that can pick up that station than any other channel. I would imagine that that ends up getting the highest ratings. BYU at Notre Dame. I'm going to put that at number two. I think BYU fans getting to watch their team on a, a, you know, not a cable network, uh, but an over-the-air network. Uh, I think that's going to be huge, and I think that's going to end up being a pretty close game. If that game is close with those two fan bases, I think it's going to do a huge number. Um, I do think Ohio State at Michigan State, regardless of the number, that being the afternoon game on ABC, I think it's going to draw huge numbers because Ohio State always does big numbers. Uh, Washington State at USC. That's another night game. It's on Fox, USC. If that game is pretty tight, there's going to be a lot of people tuned in to see whether or not Lincoln Riley's team takes their first loss. So, uh, number five on this list, I've got Tennessee at LSU. That's ESPN. It's a noon Eastern time kick. That one's going to draw some eyeballs. That's two big-time brands. It's a ranked matchup. I, I fully expect a lot of eyeballs on that one. So, that's number five for me. The most exciting games of the weekend. Very interesting here. Uh, I've got Tennessee LSU as number one. I think you're going to see a lot of explosive plays. I think this game could be pretty tight. I, I like LSU's defense, even without Banks in the secondary. Uh, I'm just curious about that offense. What is that offense going to look like? But Tennessee's defense, as we have seen, uh, Anthony Richardson threw for more yards against them than he had thrown in his other three games combined. Uh, there's holes in that defense. Now, Tim Banks is going to bring a lot of pressure and whatnot and see what LSU can actually do. But, uh, yeah, I I think that's going to be a pretty tight ball game. Uh, I think BYU-Notre Dame can end up being close. Uh, Maryland-Purdue is going to be exciting for sure. Uh, I'm not sure what to make of either one of those teams just yet, so we'll see what happens there. Utah-UCLA, yes, absolutely in the Rose Bowl. I think that one could be very exciting. And Miami-North Carolina, you want some big plays? Uh, how about two defenses? And I know that Miami's got a couple of guys that are coming back to their secondary that are certainly going to help with those passes that just go over the top like Middle Tennessee was dropping on them constantly. But North Carolina, uh, their offense certainly travels. Their defense does not. Their defense does not exist. And Miami is going to try and get Tyler Van Dyke going. Uh, they got some guys coming back healthy this week. I like that game to be uh, high scoring and pretty exciting. So, uh, the most to gain and the most to lose this week. This is another interesting question. USC and Utah both. Um, you got you got the most to gain and the most to lose with these two teams, right? Both of them, uh, Utah with a chance to host game day next week. USC, of course, uh, trying to continue leading the Pac-12 right now, continuing this undefeated streak that they've started with Lincoln Riley in his first season, that one's going to be pretty big. Now, also, on the other side, UCLA. Uh, UCLA wants to be a Pac-12 contender this year. If you are going to do that, you got to win your home games, even if it's Utah coming in. I know they have not had recent success against Utah, but I don't think this Utah defense is all it has uh, been held up to be so far this season. That defensive line can be got. I think the linebackers, while still really good, maybe not great in coverage, there's ways that they could take advantage of that Utah defense. So I want to see what version of Dorian Thompson-Robinson shows up in this one. Uh, the next one I've got for most to gain or most to lose, Kansas uh, or TCU. One of those is going to be the driver in the Big 12 right now. And I understand Oklahoma State fans don't get mad at me. I'm just telling you, those, that, those are the teams that have the hype right now. So whichever team wins this weekend in Lawrence is going to be in the driver's seat in the Big 12. So uh, especially with TCU hosting Oklahoma State next week, that's a, that's a pretty big spot. So yeah, uh, lots of teams with most to gain, most to lose for next week. The most likely 10-point underdog to win outright this weekend. So the most likely double-digit dog to win outright. And I've got a few options that I'm going to toss out there. Missouri plus 11 at Florida. 
nothing that Florida has done, even against Eastern Washington last week, has led me to believe that they can really blow anybody out. Uh, and yet, I don't know how much Missouri has left in the tank after putting up a fight against Georgia last week and after losing in such an emotional just wreckage against Auburn two weeks ago where they just gave that game away. Um, but I, I never count out Eli Drinkwitz, right? That's the biggest thing. Like, I, I don't like this roster. I don't think they are set up to win in the SEC. But would it surprise me if they got a win at Florida? Absolutely not. I could absolutely see Anthony Richardson throwing a couple interceptions, etc. Missouri may be running one of those things back, finding a way to score some points. I, I like Eli Drinkwitz as a play caller. He's very creative. So that one could be interesting. Uh, James Madison at Arkansas State. This run for James Madison has been incredible. However, Arkansas State at home in Jonesboro, no, this team is not great. Don't get me wrong. Butch Jones is still working on some things there. But James Blackman, that quarterback, has been uh, extremely competent thus far this season. That's a very interesting matchup to watch out for. Uh, how does James Madison travel here? What What is the situation I, I think that one could be a little trickier than people think it is. Akron plus 11 at Ohio. Yeah, in-state rivalry. Joe Moorhead, I think, has the coaching advantage over Tim Albin. I, I, think, I don't think that the roster is great for Akron. Those are guys that are still learning how to win, and Ohio's offense can be explosive uh, with Rourke at quarterback, but I, I think Ohio can make some mistakes. I think Akron, uh, with DJ Irons, the quarterback, I think that he... Uh, in that offense, who have just been putting up yards like crazy, they start finding ways to get into the end zone. Yeah, they could absolutely win that game. Uh, two more here, Arizona plus 13.5 against Oregon. Look, I'm never counting out Jaden DeLora and Jacob Cowan. And, and Bo Nix on the road, not great. So I think Arizona could absolutely win that game outright. And Washington State plus 12.5 at USC. If USC does not get turnovers, hmm, very interesting, Jake Dickert. Very, very respected as far as a defensive play caller. He has called some pretty crazy, pretty interesting and creative uh, defenses thus far at Washington State. I mean, they've already gone on the road and beat Wisconsin. And I understand Wisconsin is not great, but that's still a massive win for that program. They've done some big things. They have done some massive things there. So, yeah, I'm I'm interested in that one. Uh, as far as the G5 game of the week, this is where it gets fun. UTSA and Western Kentucky. That one, of course, in San Antonio on Saturday morning. Uh, that's always a track meet. It's in the Alamo Dome, so it's domed. It's, there's no weather that you got to worry about, anything like that. It's a fast track. Both of these teams like to run a lot of offense, uh, or they're really good at offense. I'll say that. And the defense is eh, a little bit to be desired there. So Western Kentucky at UTSA is one of the G5 games of the week. Another one, Southern Miss at Troy. This one could be very interesting. It's a Sun Belt matchup now. It isn't. It is a conference matchup. Uh, I love Troy's defensive line. I want to see how they hold up against that Southern Miss rushing attack. Uh, Ty Keys got some issues. Of course, the Southern Miss quarterback. He's got a cast on his right arm right now. Uh, Southern Miss's linebacker is out for that game, and yet Will Hall still seems to find ways to be competitive in ball games. So I'm I'm curious about that. And then of course on Friday night, UNLV heads to San Jose State. UNLV has been an absolute story. So far this year, absolute story. They are really, really interesting. So I am curious to see how UNLV with that quarterback, Doug Brunfeld, uh, how how him and Robbins, the running back, do against that San Jose State defensive line, who's got some studs on it. It's a pretty good football team down there. Uh, Cordero, the quarterback, has also been pretty impressive for San Jose State. Uh, that line opened, I think, four and a half, all the way out to seven. I mean, hmm, I don't know about that. I don't know about that two and a half points of line movement, but yeah, we'll see. If San Jose State is the real deal, they will win this ball game easily. If they're not, UNLV presents some issues. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app, and make sure to leave a nice five star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.